All right, this is Mr. Gillum, and today we're going to go back and do a little reviewing about vectors. All right, and so uh, what we know about a vector is that it has to have both a magnitude and a direction, or a distance and a direction, okay? The magnitude represents the length from its initial point to its terminal point. So it's been a while since we talked about all this stuff. So a vector has one arrow. It looks kind of like a ray, and its initial point is the side without the arrow, and its terminal point is the side with the arrow. The arrow doesn't mean that it continues on forever. The arrow is exactly where it stops. Okay, so there's a specific length to a vector. The direction is the angle that the vector is um, at according to the horizontal line. Okay, so the direction. So if, if x was big, it would be a obtuse vector. If it was a small acute, it would be an acute vector right there. Now we wouldn't classify it. Um, as obtuse or acute, but its direction is represented by the angle. So remember, this is, represents 0 degrees, and then as it goes around, there's 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. It's been a while since we talked about how angles work on the coordinate plane as well. So 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay? So again, vectors have a magnitude and a direction. All right, a length, and um, there's an angle that represents them. In standard position, the vector begins at the origin. Okay, its initial point is at the origin. Um, and we've talked about this before as well. Component form um, is represented almost like a coordinate x, comma, y. It's the change in x, um, and then the change in y. So, um, since this vector has a magnitude and a direction, um, it changes this far on the x-axis and this far on the y-axis. This is something we've practiced before in the past as well. So if I wanted to write each of these vectors in component form, um, what I could do is this. Um, the way we label vectors is um, this little annotation like this. Um, oops. Maybe. There we go. It's that little line with this little like half arrow above it. Okay, that's a vector sign. <clears throat> so if I was looking at um, PQ, I would say vector PQ, and then I would represent it in component form, and I use these little, like they almost look like greater than less than brackets. Okay, I need the change in x and then the change in y. So because this is the initial point, and I know it's the initial point, I'll check for my change in x starting at the initial point. It moves left to for my change in x, and it moves down 1, 2, 3, 4 for my change in y. Okay, so vector pq could be represented in component form as negative 2, negative 4. All right. Um, vector cd... See that little, don't forget, that's what the little annotation for vector would equal with these type of brackets. Um, again, I'm going to start at the initial point, and I'm going to find the change in x. 1, 2, 3, 4 in the positive direction, and then the change in y. 1, 2. Okay, so that vector could be represented in component form as 4, 2. All right, so that's just a little review for you. We've done that in the past. Um, it's important to catch up with that because of what we're going to do here in just a second. Um, now, it says find the magnitude, or length, and direction of RT for R is 2, 4, and T is negative 3, negative 2. Okay, so, <clears throat> as you can see, it's, it's hard to see, but there is a vector annotation on RT. Um, and it gives us our two points. Um, remember, when we're labeling our vector as well, I should say um, the initial point comes first in our vector labeling, and the terminal point comes second. So because it's labeled RT, I know that this is the initial point, and this is the terminal point. I also can see that from the arrow there. It stops. Okay? So it says find the magnitude and direction. So on this graph, I've plotted the two points, and we need to know how long this vector is. Okay, well we could go back to the distance formula.
but I really prefer the Pythagorean theorem. So what I did is I, I drew a little dash line here and a dash line here to make a nice right triangle and I, I just like to count the length one, two, three, four, five and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I know that the length of this vector would be five squared plus six squared. So if we call this guy x, x squared would equal five squared plus six squared or x squared would equal 25 plus 36. This is 61, not a 67. And I could take the square root of both sides. I would put plus or minus the square root of 61, but we are talking about a length, so I'm just going to use the positive version, the square root of 61. All right, if I were to do the distance formula instead, um, I would have uh, negative 2 minus 4 plus negative 3 minus 2. And uh, that would reduce to exactly what I have right here. Okay, so however you want to do it, Pythagorean theorem, distance formula, same thing, you get the same answer, same result, same outcome. So the magnitude of RT is actually... Um, The square root of 61. That's the length of the vector. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the next slide here to show how to find the direction because it's kind of tricky. Um, to find the actual direction of the vector, what we want to do is we want to put its initial point on the origin. So we need to modify this. We need to move it over two spaces and down one, two, three, four spaces. So I'm going to move this one over two and down four as well. And uh, what I want it to look like is this graph in the initial position. Um, and so um, this is the same exact vector with the same exact magnitude. It's just um, positioned to where its initial point is in the origin. Okay. Um, so it says it's 50.2 degrees right here, but you wouldn't know that without using trigonometry. And so as you can see, as I moved this triangle to where its initial point was on the origin, the angle that I'm actually going to be looking for is this angle right here right there all the way around and so this angle is the one that I need to know so if I know this is the square root of 61 I know this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 um, what I can do is this um, I can use trig and say okay well I got these three lengths here I need to know this angle I can use sine cosine or tangent I'm feeling like a cosine kind of day um, cosine of the angle that we don't know, let's call him x, right there, equals 5 over the square root of 61. Or the cosine of x equals, now it's just a matter of simplifying, Point six four zero one eight four four. if you're following along with your calculator. And then I find the inverse cosine of both sides. And I get 50.2 degrees. Okay. And so I knew to find this angle instead of this angle or this angle because I want the angle from the origin here. So when I move my vector to the origin, and I draw it right there. This tells me that this triangle, this, this right triangle, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this right triangle that we had here, this angle length is 50.2 degrees, but the direction of the vector has to do from the original starting position here. So I'll go 180 degrees, and then I go another 50.2 degrees past that. That gives me 230.2 degrees. So to find the direction of a vector, you put it in standard position where the initial point is on the origin. You find the angle between um, the vector and the horizontal axis, and then you, um, and that's your direction. All right, let's take a look at this next example here. And again, I have uh, 
two points that they give me in the vector is fg. So I know the initial point is f and the terminal point is g. I'm going to plot those two points on here. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That point right there and 3, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, down 2. Okay, and I'm going to draw my vector with the arrow right there to there. Okay. There we go. Um, so there's my vector, and I need to find the magnitude and direction. Again, I like to draw a right triangle to find my magnitude, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little dashed line in here. Um, looks like I have a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here. Um, and the nice thing about that is I can quickly use the Pythagorean theorem to find what my vector length is. So I'm going to say, okay, 4 squared plus 7 squared equals x squared, which is represented right here for now. Um, 16 plus 49 equals x squared. Um, 55, 65 equals x squared. I could do a factor tree with 65, but I know 13 times 5 are both primes. There won't be any uh, pairs underneath. So I'm the magnitude. is the square root of 65. Okay, so now that side length is the square root of 65. Okay, I could write this uh, in component form as well. Let's just do that for practice, this vector. Um, looks like it has a horizontal change of 1, 2, 3, 4, and a vertical change of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let me say 4, negative 8 would be the component form of this vector. Um, and so now the direction. So as you can see, right now my initial point is not on the origin. I want it to be on the origin, so I'm going to move it down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. So now I'm going to put my vector initial point right there, and I'm going to move this point down 5 and over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1. Okay, so I'm going to erase what I had on there. You can leave it on your paper. You don't have to erase it. It gets sloppy on the overhead when I'm doing this sometimes. So I had the same vector, the same magnitude, but now it's at the initial position here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the right triangle that I had. Right there. And um, you said that this was a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, 7. And this is a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4. And our magnitude was square root of 65. Um, we need to find the direction. So that means we need to start here and count the degrees all the way around to right here. Okay, so I know that this is 90, 180, 270. I need to know how much to add on for this angle. So I'm going to use my trig to figure out that angle. I have x degrees for now. All right, and so I know that the sine of x should equal 4 over the square root of 65. Now it's just a matter of solving. So if you're following along with your calculator, that's fine. 4 divided by 65. And sine of x equals 0.496139. We'll just round it there. And I find the inverse sine of both sides. And I get x equals 29.74 degrees, or 0.7, we can just say 0.7. Um, <clears throat> and so if x is 29.7, and this is 90, 180, 270, 270 plus 29.7 is 299.7. So the direction is 299.7 degrees. Okay, so we have its magnitude and its direction. Um, the last thing I want to remind you of, and we've done this before, is that in order for vectors to be equal, they have to have the exact same magnitude and direction. So equal vectors would be C and B. That would be an example. Okay, parallel vectors, if they are parallel and only have the same or the opposite direction. So uh, parallel vectors B is also par is I should say these are equal is B is parallel to C which is parallel 
to E. Okay, all those are parallel. And 